Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Developer Advocate. And as promised, I am wearing Beyonce merch from the On the Run 2 tour last week. The show was amazing, and I'm so glad that I went. All right, enough of that. Let's get into this week's dev news. So first up, just a quick reminder that in October, um, it's October, so it means that Hacktoberfest is underway. And Hacktoberfest was created by DigitalOcean and GitHub as a way to increase open source participation. And this year, Microsoft has joined too. And so if you want to snag a special limited edition t-shirt designed by my friend and fellow Beyonce Stan, Ashley McNamara, all you need to do is make a pull request to any of Microsoft's projects on GitHub. And uh, links to what you need to do are in the show notes and the description down below. Also be aware that we are kicking off Microsoft Ignite, the tour, in December and into 2019. And we will be in cities across the globe and attendees can learn new ways to code, optimize cloud infrastructure, and modernize their organization with deep technical training alongside experts. So the tour is going to kick off in Berlin, and we would love to see you in your city. So check out the show notes and description for a link with all the information. In some amazing free content news, I want to give a shout out to my pal, Michael Crump, who runs the uber popular Azure Tips and Tricks series on his blog, azuredev.tips. So now Michael has actually put all of these tips into a really fantastic ebook that you can download for free. And the book, which you can download as a PDF at ebook.azuredev.tips, and the link is in the show notes and description. It's well formatted, it's well laid out, and it has over 150 tips and tricks for getting the most out of Azure. So check it out, and congratulations, Michael, for all your hard work, and thank you for all these tips. Speaking of Azure, you know, it can be hard to keep up with all the changes and new features in the Azure portal. Like, it's my job to stay up to date on this stuff, and I totally get confused and miss things. But fortunately, the Azure portal team is starting a monthly series to bring to you everything that's new and updated in the Azure portal and the Azure mobile app. Mo mobile app. And they're specifically covering areas that affect the user experience and how it affects daily work. So as they explain in the inaugural post, and again, links are in the show notes and description, this isn't about what new services or what's changed with a specific service on Azure. Instead, think of it more as a roundup to all of the changes in the UI and UX on the Azure portal and the Azure mobile app as well as specific portal features. So the team plans to release these updates monthly, and I will do my best to highlight those blog posts here on TWC9. Speaking of monthly updates, the latest version of Visual Studio Code 1.28 is out, and it's available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. And as always, Brian Clark has made a great video covering the newest features and updates. Um, this release was really focused around squashing issues and handling pull requests, um, so it's more of a maintenance release. But there are still some great new features, including um, a default to the new custom title bar in Windows. It looks way prettier now. And uh, custom file icons for well-known file types in Windows and Mac OS. And there's also some great stuff coming to the editor tab completion option. So like when it's enabled and you press tab, it'll bring up completions not just for snippets, but for prefixes too. And there are lots of other changes, so check out a link in the show notes and description. And speaking of VS Code, there's going to be a cool discussion at GitHub Universe next week about how the teams at GitHub and the Visual Studio Code team work together to build the GitHub pull request extension. And there's actually going to be a live stream to this session on October 17th, and I will link to it in the show notes and description. On Channel 9 this week, we've got tons of great videos on our website and our YouTube channel. It's Microsoft Developer, if you want to subscribe, including a great episode of uh, Hashtag if Def Windows, where Nicola and Vikram talk about application monetization, so learn how to get paid. And over on the Xamarin Show, James is joined by um, a friend of the show, uh, Jeremy Lobel, to talk about and show off all the new um, and fancy features of the Xamarin.Android designer and editor. And over on Five Things, Burke is joined by Jasmine Greenway to talk about why JavaScript developers should care about .NET Core. And Jasmine and Burke are two of my favorite people, and so this is a great episode. Speaking of .NET, last week, Scott Hunter posted an update .NET, uh, to .NET Core 3.0 and .NET Framework 4.8, um, giving a bit more detail into how the .NET teams are building um, the future of .NET Core and the .NET Framework. And there have been lots of questions about the .NET Core uh, 3.0 and the .NET Framework and how they're going to differ and what developers need to focus on. And Scott's post answers a lot of those questions and tries to make uh, things as clear as possible. I highly suggest reading the post. It's linked in the show notes and description for more details. But really, like the major takeaway is that this is all really good stuff for .NET developers. 
And in other .NET goodness, my pal Shane Boyer put up a great post on the Microsoft Azure Medium publication exploring the Docker extension for VS Code and uh, .NET Core. So check out his post slash demo for more information on how to use Docker and .NET Core together in VS Code. And also on the Medium, Damian Brady just published an article on what you need to actually put into your YAML file when you're using the Pipelines feature in Azure DevOps. And some very good news, Microsoft this week joined the Open Invention Network to help protect Linux and open source. Yeah, I can't believe I get to say that out loud either. Uh, but honestly, it just shows how much um, attitudes have changed around the importance of open source and collaboration. And links to the blog posts from both Microsoft and the OIN are linked in the show notes and description. But the TLDR is that Microsoft is bringing over 60,000 issued patents to the OIN. And I'm just going to read this from the OIN's blog post. Um, the OIN's community practices uh, the patent uh, non-aggression in core open source technologies by cross-licensing Linux system patents to one another on a royalty-free basis. And patents uh, by Open Invention Network are similarly licensed royalty-free to any organization that agrees to not assert its patents against the Linux system. So that's awesome. And as I've said before, if high school me could see this now, she'd be very, very surprised, but very happy with the future. Speaking of the future, the Xbox team previewed Project xCloud. And this is going to be a new service that will enter public trials in 2019. But it's basically going to let gamers stream games, but like legit console quality games and speed from non-console devices. And we've seen attempts at cloud gaming before. And there's definitely a lot of technical work that needs to go into making this work well. But I am super, super excited to see how this evolves. Also, hey, xCloud team, let me have a demo. I want to see this. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So if you follow me on Twitter, you may have seen that I bought a new, uh, that I bought this pick of the week basically as soon as it was announced because it was so cool. And I'm going to be sure to report back with my full review. But basically, Dyson created a super high tech hair dryer uh, slash curling slash styling wand called the Air Wrap. And in addition to drying your hair super fast, the styling wand also like sucks hair to make it curl perfectly. I love it. Look, this is expensive. This is excessive. But as somebody who spends a lot of money on blowouts, I am so here for it. Um, also, no joke, the tech involved in building this thing is insanely futuristic and impressive. So let me know what you think of the futuristic styling tech in the comments or comment in on any of our other stories. And if you liked this video, hit that like button. And while you're there, hit the subscribe button on the, like, on the YouTube uh, page for Microsoft Developer so that you can get easy access to all of our amazing Channel 9 content. See you next time.